Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to build a DIY recirculating skimmer topper CO2 scrubber. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now if any of you guys have been following the channel for a long, long time, remember way back in the day I had the Coral Box Cloud 9 skimmer a couple of tanks ago, and I built a little acrylic ring that held carbon on top of it. Well, I've been thinking about using that same concept and building more of like a recirculating CO2 scrubber. Now this one's gonna be a little more of a hybrid model because I also have outside air in, and I do think there is advantage to that. So I think what I'm gonna do is build some kind of a topper that goes on the skimmer lid so you don't have to modify the actual skimmer. Use that, it can hold soda lime and it's going to tee into it. So it's going to partially suck outside air, partially suck um, air from the skimmer so it'll already be moist, we have that media on top and then recirculate it. So it's going to be a bit of a blend of the two. Now this is going to be a little bit of a prototype. I think later on, you know, I know myself and I'm probably going to build a fancy acrylic version. I'll probably bug, bug my buddy Warren, thanks Warren, to laser cut it out for me and we'll make a fancy acrylic version. But today is more of proof of concept day. We're going to try building this and we're going to see if it works. Now for my skimmer, I have the NIOS 220 and I did measure the limb, so eight and a half inches. So our first task is going to be to go into the world, hit up the dollar store or the hardware store, find something cylindrical that's eight and a half inches, something that will like just fit on top of this because that's what's going to hold our media. Now the only other tricky bit for me is with the UV here, I only have about three inches or so of clearance, so I can't make sure it's not too tall, or if it tapers in a little bit, then that might be okay to go taller. So that's kind of what we got to look for. Now on my lid, I got like a little acrylic groove cut out on either side, so I'm going to make sure there's a ton of little holes to vent it and let it suck out and flow through it that way. Now the tubing coming through here, I believe this is 3.8, so I'm going to need a 3.8 barb so I can have a tube going straight up to the lid and then tee it in off to the side. So we need a 3.8 hose barb, hose barb and something just slightly bigger of 8.5 inches to go on top of here. So let's go hunting and find some supplies. So we were wandering around the dollar store and I found this and I think it might be a little big but it could work. So the top of the skimmer is 8.5, between these ridges is 9 and an eighth. It's a little bit bigger, but that little brim could keep it in place. Maybe we do a little gasket. And the only other concern is top-wise. I know I had about three inches, so this is about four and a bit, so we'll see if that fits. Backup plan. We got our container, three bucks at the dollar store. We got our hose, this is, this is like three or four dollars for six feet of it. And what else did we get? We have a T somewhere. We got a three-eighths T, so this we're gonna have to drill a little hole poke in the side, one line will go down to the skimmer, the other will go to my outside air. That was a couple bucks, so I think we're into this for like eight bucks now, so pretty cheap. Now first things first, I'm gonna center it and just mark roughly where the vents are, because we're gonna drill some little holes to kind of connect the two. Yeah, so it is on the ridge, so I think I'm just gonna drill a bunch of tiny holes around that ridge. I of course don't wanna go too big, just in case. You don't want it to have any chance of your little pellets falling through. Now on the plus side, they would actually only fall into the skimmer cup, so you're relatively safe, but... Um, so just one second thought. There may potentially be a little bit of a channeling that might happen through this, um, which means the airflow might just go apart of around the edge of the container. If that happens, I may kind of revisit it and then offset this, so it's not pulling directly from the skimmer, that way it has to kind of go around a circle in the middle. So that might be a little bit of a future change, but for the extra buck something for a new container lid, three bucks, be an easy modification if required. Or maybe we just shake the whole top cup every once in a while just to like mix up the media. Beautiful, so got a nice tight fit. I'll probably do a little dab of super glue or hot glue around it just for good measure, but now the only one thing is we'll want to make sure that the media doesn't get sucked into here because we don't want it going into the water so maybe we'll build like a little meshy thing to go over top of it. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. Our hot glue gun's warmed up, so I'm just gonna do a little bead around the perimeter. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but it should be effective. Got our top is good. Next, we need to get our little perimeter for the skimmer to basically just fill in that air gap around the edges. And actually, let's put it on the container just to make sure it doesn't malform or anything weird. No, the hot glue should be able to peel off the acrylic later, so that shouldn't be a big issue. So we'll give this a minute or two to dry, and we'll drill our two holes just to pop our zap chops through. And 
And in the meantime, we can fill this up with media. So there is a ton of soda lime pellets in here. Um, and I think this is actually gonna work pretty well. It's gonna have the moist air from the skimmer. We're still gonna have the fresh air from the outside and the two are gonna blend together. One down. down this side. All right, I should prevent any accidental potential spilling in the sump. Keep that lid on nice and tight until we gotta refill it. There you go guys, look at that. Beautiful, those two zap shots prevent any potential spilling. Now we have a massive chunk of media to recirculate through our skimmer. I still think if I did straight recirculating, I'd probably get a bigger pH boost, but I still think there is some benefit of getting that fresh air from outside. So we're gonna leave it in kind of hybrid mode of splitting the two. Now the only pain is I have to install it from the opposite side, but that's okay, so let's get this installed. Give it a fresh cleaning, all clean. Now I also do have the little smart skimmer security on here. I do like that, it prevents from ever overflowing. And it's probably a good idea, especially if you're using a recirculating scrubber to make sure that none of that soda lime gets directly into the tank. Now, the only tricky thing is this has to be installed from the backside. Tight, but just fits. Our outside airline is gonna connect to the top of the T. This will get a little bit of fresh air inside. And our straight down one's gonna come right up to the bottom of the T. Another fun random side tidbit is I started putting the output of my CO2 reactor right where the intake of the skimmer is. And I find this actually helps off gas a little more um, CO2. This is a bit of a tip I got from Chris from ACI. So thanks for that one, Chris. I think on version two, I'm gonna make a little T that taps it right into the skimmer and tape. So it drips right into that air hole. And I think that's gonna work pretty well too. Well, the only slight issue I see is it may be a slight bit of a pain to empty the skimmer cup. Aside from that, I think it's gonna work pretty well. So as you can see, my pH has been not the best the last few days. So the highest peak that we had was 8.11. Uh, yesterday 8.02, 7.97, low 7.87. So it's definitely been a little on the low side. I'm gonna let this kick on and we'll check back kind of later tonight or tomorrow and we'll see what kind of an impact it made. But for less than 10 bucks, pretty easy project. All right guys, it's now been just over 24 hours and taking a look at the results. So at this time yesterday, my pH at 6.30 p.m. was about 8.09 and it's currently 8.17. So about a 0.8 increase, but the one thing that kind of stood a little more to me was looking at the difference of the lows. Now, if I look at yesterday's low, it was down to 7.87 and last night was 7.97. So 0.1 increase, which is a pretty decent little boost. Now, when you look at this, pH is a logarithmic and every little point you get actually makes a fairly big difference. Now, I actually suspect this will get a bigger increase day over day. Like I think tomorrow is gonna be a little bit higher and the day after that a little bit higher until it removes all that CO2 from the water. Now, it wasn't quite as high as I was hoping expecting for it, and I think I know exactly why. Looking at this lovely container, I just realized expiry date was 2017. This is four years ago. This is extremely expired and that would explain a lot. So it's still working, it's still doing its job, but it's not quite as well as it should be doing. So at least I know why now, but Proof of concept, I think it's working very well so far, even with my four-year-old media still getting a good 0.1 boost and hopefully gonna be a little bigger day after day. So I will update you guys on this one in a few weeks and we'll see how this goes. But overall, less than 10 bucks. I think I went to it for $8 and it's already increased my pH. So super, super duper easy DIY that you guys can do. So hopefully you guys implement this. Hopefully you enjoy this. If you did, hit that like button, boost that pH, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys on the next update.